My name is Christy Booth Spaulding, and today is May 13, 2014. We are in Cordell, Oklahoma, interviewing Wayne Booth as part of the Voices of Extension Oral History Project. Thank you for joining us today. To start off, could you talk a little bit about your early life, maybe when and where you were born? Well, I was born on a farm four miles east of Cordell on uh, April uh, 28th, 1924. I'm uh, only one uh, generation away from coming to Washtenaw County in a covered wagon, I guess, since both my father and my mother uh, came to Washita County. Uh, my father in uh, 1898 in a covered wagon. And where did they come from in the covered uh, wagon? My grandfather brought uh, his wife and my father from uh, Kreiner Creek over near Purcell. And prior to that, uh, they had come up uh, from Nakona, Texas to Kreiner Creek. What did your parents do for a living? Uh, we lived on a farm and dad was uh, a farmer. Um, tell us about some interactions you had uh, with the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service uh, 4-H early in life. Well, I never had a whole lot. Uh, two years I was in 4-H when I was in the fifth and sixth grade at Lincoln School at, uh, at Cordell. And uh, when I got in the seventh grade, uh, I enrolled in uh, vocational agriculture where they had an FFA program. But 4-H, uh, we had a volunteer leader who uh, really helped me uh, a whole lot. She uh, was a former school teacher and I was very, very bashful. And uh, <laughs> really I was so bashful and timid I couldn't lead in silent prayer. But uh, she uh, got me to express uh, my opinion uh, standing up and uh, prior to that uh, to her her insistence and her leadership as a volunteer 4-H uh, uh, leader uh, kind of got me off a of dead center of being so bashful that uh, uh, I was interested in in livestock uh, she had no livestock information uh, or, or teaching. Uh, our county extension agent was Tig Fisher. Uh, Washita County did not have uh, an extension agent uh, right after the passing of the Smith Lever Act. They, uh, uh, fact uh, was a little reluctant to vote in a, an extension agent and the farmers in Washita County uh, got uh, together and uh, petitioned that we have a voting whether or not to establish an extension agent and uh, the first time it did not pass the next voting, it did pass, and that was about, I believe, 1917, before Washita County had its first extension agent and its first 4-H. Prior to that time, they did have some community, they called them, uh, I believe Dad said, a corn and, uh, and pig club. He tells about when he uh, 
first exhibited at the county fair. It was in 1912 as a, uh, a member of the Corn and Extension Club from uh, Center Point, a rural school. And what was your father's name? Claude Booth. Okay. Dad was uh, very conscientious. Uh, Dad and Mom uh, were extremely uh, insistent that uh, we children, there's just two of us, I had one sister, uh, get an education. And they were... Uh, uh, well, Dad had, uh, his, his father had uh, come to Washita County, and one of the first things he did was uh, help organize uh, a school in, in his community. And going back to you being in a 4-H club, you mentioned a volunteer leader, and what was her name? Miss Sassine. Okay. And how have you used those public speaking skills that you learned in 4-H since then? How has how have those skills helped you as you were growing? Well, up? really, uh, uh, my training in 4-H uh, opened a line of leadership. Uh, in, uh, in my ability, I uh, was uh, later state secretary for Oklahoma FFA, and I was state president for Oklahoma FFA. Uh, Cordell has had, uh, I guess, seven state officers. I'm the only one that was president and the six other offices of which I was, helped one was uh, vice president. In 1943, I was uh, elected president of the Oklahoma FFA. And uh, today uh, I'm the, uh, I was honored at the uh, FFA convention as the oldest living state president of uh, Oklahoma FFA. And then did you have any national awards or? or well, yes, I participated in some national activity. I was the first star farmer of America from Oklahoma in 1943. And uh, I uh, also was uh, in livestock judging uh, <laughs> Miss Sassine helped me tremendously in uh, the ability to give reasons as to uh, analyze a class of livestock and then talk reasons. We won several state uh, livestock judging contests. I was the uh, high individual, and we were the first team by some 140 points at the National Livestock Judging Contest for 4-H and FFA members that was held in Denver, Colorado in 19, uh, uh, well, it was January of 1942. Uh, I talked, uh, I guess I accomplished one thing that I never, ever felt could exist. I missed a class of uh, beef cattle in 1942 at the National Contest because the best steer in the class had a little limp in him. And uh, when we talked reasons, we had 12 cl uh, classes of livestock. We gave six sets of reasons. I, uh, I talked to him as the uh, would hang up the most desirable carcass and was the, in my opinion, the best covered steer in the, uh, in the class. However, I criticized him because he had a limp. And uh, 
I got 47 on the placings and a perfect 50 on my reasons. And that goes back to uh, the early training that uh, I got as a uh, grade school 4-H club member. What was 4-H like as a grade school member? Uh, in the county, it was a pretty, uh, pretty active organization. I went to school at Cordell, and uh, uh, every activity that we had was after school, and uh, we had no uh, no livestock art activity. Uh, but uh, now, as I look back on it, the uh, activity of developing oneself was very important training for a young grade school uh, member, especially one who was extremely bashful. So what are some things you did? <laughs> uh, in 4-H? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me, yes. Miss Sassine was a uh, uh, English and speech teacher, and she would uh, uh, give demonstrative lessons uh, about uh, public speaking. And uh, she would uh, have us read an article and then get up and discuss that article, which gives you the ability to analyze a situation and then to substantiate your placing, your analyzation of it. And uh, that uh, ended up to be tremendous, uh, really tremendous training because uh, in so doing, it doesn't take you all day to make up a decision, but you analyze the situation, you explain your analyzation, and you make a decision. And uh, it was uh, probably that early training in making a decision that helped me most in, uh, in life. Describe a 4-H meeting back then. Uh, a little hectic. Uh, you know, fifth, uh, fifth and sixth graders uh, are pretty active. And uh, we'd have a meeting. We uh, didn't know any parliamentary procedure and whatnot. And Miss Sassine had... Uh, instilled in those who paid attention uh, some parliamentary procedure, which uh, has helped me throughout my entire 90 years uh, of life. And uh, it, uh, uh, we used it to conduct our meeting. We conducted our, tried to conduct our meetings in an orderly manner and uh, stay on the subject, which was extremely difficult. Did you have large 4-H groups, or what size was your 4-H group? Uh, since it was not during school hours, uh, really, uh, it had uh, the interests of those who were interested in self-developing and those who were just hunting a good time to uh, uh, spend uh, in uh, extracurricular activities. And uh, it really wasn't too large. I think we only had about uh, 15 to 18 active members in the entire school of members of the 4-H club. What are some things that they offered back then? Did they have contests or what 
as a, uh, as a, I guess you call them clover buds now, don't you? Uh, a, a, a young grade school member. Uh, we had uh, no particular contest. We were encouraged to participate in exhibition at the county fair. And of course it was uh, uh, craft development, uh, crafts exhibition, or uh, maybe uh, drawing a picture. We didn't have much photography. We had no photography encouragement. Um, young, as a young child, what was your family's involvement with Extension? Did your mother belong to the home demonstration clubs or did the home demonstration agent or the agriculture person help your family in any way? Yes, my family was uh, extremely uh, active in uh, the extension service. Uh, mother was uh, very active in the uh, home demonstration club. Uh, she uh, was uh, president of the county council. She attended each year uh, the uh, State Home Demonstration Club meeting at Stillwater. Uh, Dad was active in uh, uh, self-help from the extension. Uh, several years, uh, he would, uh, he kept records of our poultry uh, uh, activity. And for several years, he had the top egg producing uh, flock of chickens in the county. Uh, they would uh, report the number of eggs. Uh, <laughs> Tig Fisher would come out and help dad and they'd cull uh, uh, the hens. And if one wasn't uh, a really producing hen, he would shuck her and get rid of her. And uh, he had the highest egg production per hen in Washita County. He produced uh, eggs for the, the hatchery, uh, hatching eggs. Uh, it was a, a flock of white monarcha chickens, which is kind of a well. Then they were kind of called the improved leghorn. Also, uh, Dad uh, started uh, doing some uh, uh, conservation work, and uh, uh, he started a crop rotation program before it was a, uh, a government program. Uh, he started a voluntary crop rotation program and would plant... Uh, Oh, a few black-eyed peas and whatnot in the rotation program. And uh, he is pretty popular during the uh, early part of the Depression because uh, he planted a field of uh, black-eyed peas and he would uh, let uh, people who needed uh, some assistance uh, food-wise come out and uh, get the black eyed peas. We also milked uh, a herd of cows. We milked them by hand. I've gone to sleep lots of mornings with my head in the cow's flank uh, uh, milking. And uh, we separated and sold cream and uh, he gave the uh, skim milk to needy families who would come and get it. And uh, Tig Fisher uh, was really a popular man in, in, uh, in our community and especially in our family in assisting dad and mom 
in uh, cooperative extension work. You mentioned your dad's name was Claude Booth. What was your mother's name? Bernice Booth. She was a lober. They had, uh, uh, dad's family was only two brothers and mom's family was eight, uh, eight children who reached uh, adulthood and uh, there were six brothers and two sisters. Bernice, Alma Bernice Lober. And she came uh, to Washita County in 1904 on a train from uh, Darlow, Kansas near Hutchison. And they were neighbors to uh, my uh, dad's parents. Growing up, can you think of any project or area that your mother did with extension through the home demonstration clubs? Well, she did lots of canning uh, until I was in junior high. I didn't realize you could buy uh, uh, underwear and whatnot. She uh, made all our, uh, a lot of our clothes, my shirts and whatnot. Uh, I'm sure she wasn't appreciated by the uh, feed dealers. At that time, we had 17 places in Washington, in Cordell, you could sell cream and eggs. And there was, uh, and uh, most of them handled feed. And she was great on getting uh, uh, feed sacks when feed came in uh, uh, different types of material sacks. Uh, she would want invariably the third sack from the bottom or the sack near the bottom because it matched the sack that she had gotten the week before and she'd have material to make, uh, make clothes out of. My sister Patty, five years younger than I, she made uh, all her uh, uh, dresses and whatnot out of, uh, as well as my shirts and uh, uh, underwear and whatnot out of uh, uh, feed sack material. Mom uh, worked for the, uh, uh, in the county fair for I don't know how many years. She was extended the uh, uh, an honor of uh, who's who of the Washita County Fair in uh, for being the uh, at the fair, being the superintendent of the uh, Farm Women's Club Division. And Washita County has always had a pretty good fair. We started in 1907 as a county fair. In fact, I guess I have a long uh, record of involvement in the county fair. In 1924, September 1924, uh, I won a dollar at the Washita County Fair. It was a baby show that uh, they had uh, I don't know 